Hey, Brian. Hey, John. How are you? Doing good. How are you? Welcome, everybody, to Technology in the Arts. Episode 5. Episode 5. Like 2.0, Episode 5. It's alive. Yes. So, we might not be, but... I, I am. So, uh, what do you want to talk about tonight? Well, uh, just a couple of uh, personal things, quickly. Um... Obviously, you know, I saw Ben Folds 5 uh, two Fridays ago, and I mentioned about the whole pledgemusic.com thing where I contributed money and helped fund the, the making of the album, and I got my goodies today, and I just wanted to uh, share this. This is, this is a the, the T-shirt. <laughs> it's basically like a 70s... Or, yeah, basically a 70s Skinner dish design but on the back it's reunion tour 1986 which is backwards I, I guess in there but no it's it's forward it just appears backwards to you I'm just backwards uh, but inside with the CD with the CD here oh cool you want to see yeah I can see it the, the sound of the life of the mind here with the robot here a little bit of a glare there, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll give it a minute. Right. So, okay, so inside that was this insert. And there's a signed picture, and again, the glare, but... And inside are the names of everybody who contributed money <laughs> to the making of the album. And I am right above... Uh... I'm right above the D here. I doubt you're going to be able to see it, but um, I'm 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 right there somewhere. So anyway, just wanted to share that. Thought that was cool. Very cool. Um, Did you happen to share the link to the uh, show? Oh, you know what? I didn't. I'm I'm going to do that now. Uh, okay. Because otherwise, nobody will know what's going on. Yeah, I, I did. Uh, I did uh, post on the blog and uh, tweet it that uh, we were going on in about twenty minutes or so earlier. But uh, uh, we were going on in about twenty minutes or so earlier. But uh, hold on, sorry. Uh, live now. Talking about. Facebook, MySpace. Okay. And I will... Uh... Oh, physics. You know, I wish they would be able to... I wish they could give you the link before you go live. You can. You Yes. Oh, well, you've got to teach me how to do that. It's it, You click on embed and it gives you a link. Oh. It's available to you right now as the creator of the when when you choose to uh, when you choose to make it YouTube or I'm sorry uh, hang out on air it gives you an embed link you have to click on embed it gives you the link it also I've, gives you an embed okay I've, I've seen it I just didn't realize it that's what it did yeah it's up in your up in your corner there. Okay. All right. Wait. That is good to know. I, I need a Google Plus uh, Hangout uh, tutorial from the one and only John Lamazny. I would be happy to do that. Okay. As always. So, yes. So, anyway, uh, last Friday, after the Ben Folds 5 show, the week after, uh, I saw Peter Gabriel live at the Wells Fargo Center in Philly. And in the fourth row, it was awesome. And uh, you know, it's it's kind of it was awesome and sad at the same time because Peter Gabriel really was the first music artist to really inspire me. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'd liked music before June 1986, but it was his performance at the Amnesty International show and um, that year that really made me see the power of music and 
that was when I really became a big Peter Gabriel fan. And at this point, uh, he's only doing a couple of shows next year, and he's taking the rest of the year off to be with his family. So, What's that about? Eh, he just wants to go some places without having to take a band with him. <laughs> you know, he wants to be able to visit with his family instead. So uh, he's just taking most of the year off. And, you know, this was the 25th anniversary of So. That's why he did this tour. He played it in its entirety. And, you know, did some other classics. And, you know, he's not get, neither of us are getting any younger. And especially he... He he's not getting any younger. Yeah, so. none of us are really. Yeah, right. Well, I know, but you know, it it just seems like that could have been my last time seeing him. It's not like he comes around every year or so. I mean, even on the normal Peter Gabriel schedule, it's like eight, nine, ten years between U.S. tours. So, you know, now you wipe out another year. Who knows? Who knows when when or if he's ever going to be touring again? So. You know, I just had a scary a, thought about uh, Peter Gabriel playing Wipeout. That would be horrible. <laughs> uh, so, um, so there was that, and I just want to uh, reflect on, um, especially at a uh, benefit concert for a tsunami. That would be just a really. <laughs> that would be such. A horrible choice. That would be such a horrible choice to play Wipeout at a Tsunami Benefit conference concert. That would be... Don't do that, Peter. This is for the victims <laughs> of the Tsunami. <laughs> don't do that. That's bad. Uh, so, um, You're going to hell. I just realized. Yeah, well, <laughs> I... <laughs> I, I realized this before, actually. Yeah. I realized that about fifty thousand clickety clicks ago. <laughs> so, uh, and and now that we're laughing, going into my you know reflection on the passing of somebody in my personal notes. Thanks, thanks, John. Awesome. Um, Wipeout would not work yeah, well yes. at his. Yeah. Uh, I know this is technology in the arts, and we don't you know sports hardly ever comes into the equation, but. Um, Steve Sable, the president of NFL Films and the son of the founder, Ed Sable, uh, died last week at the age of 69 from a, he'd been battling brain cancer for some time. And I just want to acknowledge it because he, he was somebody who took a sport as violent as NFL football and used film technology and the whole trappings of, of the film industry, original music scores and dramatic narration and added that to, you know, weird camera angles and super slow motion and added that to the action on the field. And, and the highlights that NFL films produced were really, you know, like mini dramas, <laughs> you know, originally with John Facenda doing the voiceovers and then later Harry Callis and you know both have since passed away and uh, I believe uh, actually I'm not sure who's doing it now Scott Graham was doing it for a while I'm, I don't know who's doing the voices now but but I just wanted to mention that because he really brought an element of technology and arts into the sports industry and was probably one of the first to really do it effectively um, somebody on Twitter said that you know even for ESPN I mean he made NFL Films, probably the the premier sports media company in the world. And you know, I don't think anybody else has even <coughs> come close to matching it. So, And they're, and it's based in New Jersey. So, it's, yeah, in South Jersey. So uh, give a shout out to there and, and just, you know, say rest in peace, Steve Sable. He's going to be missed. Yeah. Uh, and that's I, it on my end. And, John, um, I know you had a – the reason why we went on late tonight, you had a pretty uh, interesting night. I'm sure, sure you're going to talk about that. So. I sure did. So uh, those of you watching almost assuredly know that I work at uh, Princeton University, something I'm, I'm very uh, proud of. Um, I uh, Sure, rub it in. <laughs> 
I wasn't why I said that. I know, I know. I I'm humbled every day when I when I drive to that parking lot and uh, walk into the building where I work and and look around me and walk to various buildings on campus. And uh, just recently, I started working with the astrophysics department with one particular faculty member, uh, Professor Bacos. Uh, his first name is Gaspar. And incidentally, I, I guess I took special interest because he's Hungarian. And uh, so, you know, the six words of, of Magyar that I know I, I used on him, and uh, that was a short conversation, but luckily he knows English. <laughs> and uh, so um, I've been working with him a lot in terms of instructional technology and uh, pedagogical approach using technology, and he's he's been fantastic. And uh, for whatever reason, I've been interacting with him a lot, and... Um, Recently, as I was dropping off some equipment, he, uh, not recently, this morning, he said, uh, by the way, the star party that we've been talking about getting the students uh, really interested in is happening tonight. Would you like to come? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. I, I, he, he had been talking about the star party uh, on the roof of, of uh, Peyton Hall. And... Uh, Every time he said it, I felt a little bit jealous. You know, like it, it must be amazing for students in a uh, in an astronomy class to be able to you know learn from somebody who's been doing this all their life, and especially you know the quality of somebody who teaches at Princeton. What, what a great opportunity that must be! And then this morning he said, you know, would you would you like to come? I was like, yeah, absolutely. What time is it? And he said, 8.30. And I said to myself in my, in my brain, uh, Brian's going to kill me. But uh, I had to do it. In and time. He, in yeah. time. <laughs> I wonder how it'll happen. It'll probably be a uh, cartoonish safe dropped off of a high building. Or piano. Or piano, yeah. Or TNT uh, dynamite. So anyway... Uh, yeah, I, I said, yeah, I would I would absolutely love that. So it was a small group, and uh, we started in the Peyton Obser uh, Observatory, which uh, has a dome, you know, like that, that classic sort of looking one. Yep. Yeah. Do you really have to demonstrate what a dome looks like? No, 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 hold on. Okay. Uh... Seriously? All right, I'm going to get some hand puppets out. Yeah, I, I bet you have some. So here actually is a, uh, a illustration that I did for 365 sketches, and Peyton Observatory reminds me quite a bit of this. This, this actually reminds me quite a bit of uh, what happened tonight. So... Uh, they have one of those on the building uh, next to Lewis Library in Princeton, and uh, the, the the telescope we used was sort of like a bigger version of the the Mead telescopes that you see for sale in the mall. It was a slightly larger barrel and slightly longer length, and um, although I'm sure that they had the ability to have it automatically navigate to a particular place in the sky and that it's aligned and all that, it was he he had the students set it up manually because th their skill in that, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we looked at the moon, and the moon was beautiful tonight. And we talked about the reason why uh, you use red light in, in an observatory or in a, in a stargazing situation because if you use bright light, of course, you, you ruin uh, a certain amount of your vision and you would need to recover from that and it might take five minutes as opposed to using red light, which has less of an effect on your, um, your night vision. And that's why you always see it in battle situations and in you know, military usage. And uh, we talk quite a bit about night clarity and how that is um, not night clarity, but sky clarity and the various dimensions of that. And uh, 
seeing is is one of the ratings and uh, transparency is one of the ratings and uh, cloud cover affects it of course but uh, a particular given spot on the planet because of uh, air uh, the pollution in the air it, you know will will be affected most of the time and of course if you're on a mountain in Hawaii it's going to have a different effect than if you're in Princeton in the middle of you know a city and the stadium was lit up but it was still just a beautiful night and very clear oh the other thing was um, there was a certain amount of atmospheric uh, like when you look out at, at a uh, at a beach and you sort of see that wavy effect Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, that might have been been seeing, but there was turbulence. They referred to that as turbulence, and there was high turbulence tonight. And they showed a chart where people chart uh, those given factors in a particular area, and the Peyton Observatory has its own rating for that in that area, so that they can predict at what point in the night there would be the best clarity, the best seeability, the best uh, lack of turbulence and all those things. And on uh, the one t teaching assistant, or maybe he was a tech, on his laptop, on his MacBook Pro, he had an application installed that made everything this night vision red so that it, you could just look and use your applications without it necessarily uh, affecting anybody else's vision or affecting his vision, so it was really interesting from that perspective. And uh, we talked about the craters on the moon and the object that made it and the age of the crater, the Tycho crater, and we got to see it with two different lens extensions. One was like a 35 millimeter and one was a 11 millimeter, and the 11 millimeter uh, showed a much greater magnification, and the 35 millimeter or 50 millimeter showed a, a much uh, showed much more of the moon, and um, you had to step up on a step ladder in order to get into the 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 eyepiece, and he switched the eyepiece at one point to be uh, side view as opposed to top view, and then after all that, and students asking questions and the uh, tech giving answers and the professor giving answers, we went out onto the roof and set up with a a set of binoculars like you have never seen in your life. It was the, the binoculars were like, I don't know, they were like that. It was ridiculous. And uh, it was set up on a tripod, a really sturdy, tall tripod. And uh, we got a demonstration of a sky chart. And uh, he had one of those cool green lasers that get you in trouble with the FAA. Yep. And. Uh, it just there was so much information in this beautiful optional meeting for students with somebody who uh, who teaches for Princeton University. It was just a beautiful, incredible opportunity, and and I want to I doubt that Professor Bakos will will see this uh, podcast because he's got probably a hundred more important things to do. But in case he does, I just wanted to say thank you so much for the opportunity and for the invitation, and it was incredibly gracious. And uh, I'm looking forward to the next opportunity. And, and from the discussion we had, there will probably be other opportunities. And um, I just, it was fantastic. It was a really great night, really night, a great night for viewing, really great overview of basic techniques with uh, observing. And I've done some not only amateur observing, but amateurish <laughs> observing on my own and uh, learned so much tonight, learned so much and got excited about the terminology and the technique and the tools that you use and the, it, just everything about it was great. Great opportunity. Uh, yeah, it sounded awesome. And uh, from your Facebook thread, it looks like uh, you need to get several people into that uh Observatory. Yeah, well, I mean, honestly, the the thing about it was not necessarily the observatory at all. It was neat to use the the big telescope, but um, I'm really excited about these binoculars. You know, and it seemed like for maybe 
uh, three hundred or four hundred dollars, you could get a pair that that began to approach the quality of this set of binoculars, and uh, just a, a great opportunity, just a really great opportunity. And I, I feel like, you know, stargazing can happen very easily for not a lot of money. And um, yeah, I'll get all those people on that thread to come out, and and we'll have a good time just like looking at the moon. Yep. Uh, I don't. Know if you, do, do you remember uh, a, f a few months ago uh, the NASA Wallops facility in Virginia on the Virginia Eastern Shore uh, launched those rockets that uh, left that trace chemical in the clouds? They were they were studying the upper level atmosphere winds because no. there hadn't there haven't been that many studies on it. And I think it was in April. I think that was another thing that was that took place in April. I'm not sure. Maybe it was more. All I know is that uh, the window to launch was between like midnight and 5 a.m. Like, and they were, and I, I wanted to watch it because they said you could see it from New Jersey. Actually, one of the report observation points was in uh, was near Tuckerton. Oh. And because uh, they they had a camera in Tuckerton, they had a camera in was it Georgia? Or South Carolina, somewhere somewhere down there, and the, you know the, the uh, and the at the flight facility in Walps, uh, Virginia, uh, Walps Island uh, in Virginia, and so it kept on getting scrubbed because it was such a low level mission that they couldn't really enforce keeping boats out of the the red box as they call it in the ocean, and there was one time where they were all ready to go, and then boats showed up in the red box and or boats in the box that's as they call it and it kept on getting scrubbed and then finally this uh one morning uh you know i was like okay this is it you know i kept on waking up i kept on you know this happened for like two weeks straight or something like that and i i, I was driving out to the, the the shore for a better look i drove an hour it got scrubbed because of a boat in the box i had to drive back well, this one morning, it gets down to like 4.50 in the morning, and they have to, all of a sudden now, all the boats are gone, and they're like, do we have go? And they're going through all this, the status checks, and they're like, go, go, go. And so it, it was basically, they were at T minus uh, seven or eight in, in holding. So they had to make the decision because the window ended at five, and it was now at like 4.51, 4.52, and they were like going through all their final checks and it's like you know it's a go or a no go and all of a sudden the the one person that was still like on the fence they're like go and it was awesome like listening to the webcast because here are the nasa people just like methodically and professionally just going through these checks and it was like at the last second they were able to get this these rockets off it was like a, i think it was like five or six rockets and they all left this trace chemical, and it made like these kind of cool, wispy, like a Van Gogh thing in the in the sky. So you got to see it. Yeah, from from here in uh, Hamilton, in in Mercer County. Wow, that's really cool. I uh, I just I, I ran outside, um, and I just looked to I was using my phone. I was trying to figure out where I, where east southeast was, and um. And I was like getting disappointed. I, I wasn't seeing anything, and all of a sudden, I, I I I see this arcing, you know, flame going into the sky, and uh, followed by several others after it. And then the the chemical was released. It was pretty cool. Wow. So that's really amazing. Yeah, uh, I wish I'd seen that. So yeah, so we should we should have a uh, we should have an episode dedicated to space slash art. Yeah, I would love that. I would absolutely love that because it was very artistic too. I mean, the 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 way the the chemicals were creating these these shapes in the air was very uh, interesting. Uh, anything else, John, or do you want to just get on to our agenda? Uh, yeah, let's go to the agenda. I mean, I, I think we're deep into our agenda at this point. But well, yeah, well, th that's our these are our personal. Yep. Thing. But. Uh, Obviously, you know, just to let people know, we are going to talk about the Apple Maps app disaster uh, just in a few minutes. But uh, something that came 
about today, I believe, um, uh, there's a preview video on new.myspace.com. They're rebooting again. And I took a quick look at the video, and I'm going to try to share it here. Uh, it was kind of interesting. And and John's going to put me on this. but And I'm not saying it's going to work. I'm just saying with all the negativity towards Facebook these days with Timeline, and then there was also... Uh, news going out today that some users on Facebook were uh, some of their private messages were showing up in their timeline um, private messages that have been sent between 2007 and 2009 were showing up publicly on their timeline uh, I don't have the details on it I, I was seeing some, uh, an initial article and it was being reported in various countries but it wasn't everybody um, I didn't see any on mine so when, when you brought this up, my, my reaction in my mind was about something that happened uh, today for me. I remembered that I had posted a quote about something. And I was writing a post, and I was trying to recall the quote. And Facebook was the only place that I put it, because very often that's the case. If there's something fleeting, Facebook is often the place that it goes. And uh, the problem with that is that I was uh, trying to do a search for that quote and had an incredibly hard time doing it because you can do a search, but that search is for people, place, things, right? Yep, you can't and search your profile or timeline. You, you can search other people's posts, yeah. and you can search public posts, but you cannot search your own, your own activity. Yeah, I don't understand that. I don't know, understand why there can't be, like, on a blog where you can search your, your, your posts. I don't know why it's there ridiculous. can't be. It's ridiculous. And uh, the thing that, that really aggravated me was that I knew, like, three keywords in it. In, in the quote that I was looking for. I knew what the quote was about. I knew around when I had posted it. But it was incredibly difficult, an incredibly difficult process for me to get back to it. And I, I thought, uh, I understand that Facebook doesn't really care about what's not going on right now, but I might. And then you, then you mentioned this thing where, you know, a post was made public from you know months ago or years ago or whatever and I thought I was specifically looking for something that I posted just a couple months ago that was public and had an incredibly hard time finding it well so the, why I mean, would I care about something from you know before a month ago uh, a private message becoming public when it's like I, it, it's so difficult to find anything that didn't happen in the last week. Yeah, because but, but, but people use private messaging to avoid people, other people seeing what the message. Who knows what was on there? I mean, it's it's just the fact that it's there. And when you send a private message, you expect it to remain, you expect it to remain private. And, and here it is for all the world to see on 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 people on somebody's and, timeline. And I go back to the idiom that every technologist who is aware of uh, privacy issues or of technology in general would say, and I have said it many times, in uh, usually in the context of a, a digital security talk or a, a digital privacy talk, that if you do not want to see it on the cover of the New York Times, you should not type it. I'm serious. Yeah. Because there, if it's in a database somewhere, it is extrudable. It is exposable. It is possible that your content will show up in a record, in a court record, in a newspaper, in a email of somebody who you wish did not see it. And so once something, once some idea leaves your head and goes through your fingers into the keyboard onto your screen and get sent somewhere else, it might as well be public. 
No, no, no. You have you have a point. Very valid point. And you know, I yeah, Facebook could have done a better job if this is the case. But the the frustration that I found in trying to get to something that I myself had posted uh, when I knew keywords in it gives me all of the satisfaction I need that even if something that I've made private became public and as long as it was not you know brought to the surface at, at the front of my posts which I doubt that it would be because it has a timestamp um, I'm just not that concerned about that issue. I know I should be. I know I should be outraged that Facebook possibly made my private post public, but in, until they get a good search engine so that I can look at my own content, I'm, I'm not too worried about it. So, but I mean, aside from that, though, I mean, there's the general uh, you know, negativity that, which I think is mostly unwarranted when, you know, whenever... Facebook changes something, it, it's like the first reaction is, oh, Facebook sucks, I'm going to cancel my account, and then nobody ever does, or a small percentage of people ever do, and it, it's, I love how people expect a, a, a an online network to stay the same, like, oh, why is Facebook changing, why is it, it's like, it's on the internet, like, you expect it to, do you want oh. Facebook 1.0 for the whole of eternity? I mean, I don't understand like why people complain about it changing. But well, you're you're specifically really referring to MySpace and the reason why it died, right? You know, and right. it, it's showing up again in the form of Pinterest is kind of disgusting and stupid. Well, uh, let me try to play this video from this. Well, uh, just just before you say that, I just wanted to say. Um, one more outrageous statement. I love Timeline. I think Timeline was... I did too. Fantastic. I did too. Yeah, I don't... When, whenever somebody says that they don't like Timeline, I feel like they have... They don't like their life. No, 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 no. No, that, that is how I feel, though. It's like, that's what, that, that was what I said, though. I mean, people... I mean, Timeline is your life story, and it's like, why wouldn't you like that? Why wouldn't you want to share your life story? They were sharing their life story before Timeline came along. Timeline just organized it in a different way and makes it a bit more sensible from a time orientation. Uh, I mean, I, I, the content is no different. People still post, uh, you know, what they're eating or they post a quote or they post now. a poem. That's... or It's linear. And the, the fact that I can go back to the beginning of that timeline and you know put a baby picture or go to the beginning of a timeline for an organization and put the uh, you know the initial shovel in the dirt picture or whatever the case might be is sort of a beautiful thought no I, I, I agree and I, I, I I'm not sure of the the backlash against against it's timeline changed. Myself. I mean I understand people being resistant to change but I, I really do feel like timeline was a great improvement and the people who resist it and people who said, oh, they're finally going to push me to timeline, I was thinking, well, yeah, I, I, if I want to know something about your history, I, it would have been very difficult for me to do before you got moved to timeline. And, you know, what is Facebook if not a collection of ideas in a chronology about you? And, and what's, what, what, what I also find is that people don't understand the the hierarchy that or the the way Facebook I guess ranks your own posts in your news feed I, I mean I post something I rarely ever see it in my in my news feed it goes on to, it, it's it, 11 o'clock it depends on thank you if, Dr. Hawking Stephen Hawking it depends on uh, whether or not there's any activity on it. If if a bunch of people see it and either comment or like it, I think it pops up. Right, and that's and that's what I I try to tell people. Like if you post something, it's there. It's just not in your news feed. I think people look at their news feed instead of their timeline. Their profile, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, the profile, and uh, and just assumes that. And that and then you wind up having like three different posts. Like people are always saying, oh, Facebook lost this post. It's like no, it didn't. It was there. You're just looking in the wrong place. 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't have complaints about timeline. I have more complaints about posts about how bad timeline is. Yes, exactly. I, that's that's the that's what I hate when Facebook changes and you get you get the avalanche of oh this sucks. Yeah. Uh, I'm canceling my account. Yeah. And, see ya. <laughs> and then you know, a year later, those people are still on Facebook. Uh, yeah, people come back. Still complaining about the change. It's I, I just don't understand it. But l- yeah, let me my try space, to... MySpace wishes people were complaining about their changes. Let me see if I can. Uh... You're not going to be able to share a video, Brian. I don't. I doubt. But it's 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 on its own web page. That doesn't should not matter. Matter of fact, you might get our our video taken down because it's not our content. Okay. Well, you know what? I'm sure MySpace would not mind. Yeah, it they might Yeah, we're going to get a takedown order. Well, that's because Google doesn't want us promoting another social network. No, it has nothing to do with it. It's just not our content. We're showing a video that somebody created. It's a commercial for MySpace. You don't understand how copyright infringement works, Brian. I do know how it works. Then you understand why our video is going to be taken down. If you understand, I'm only going to play it for another... 10 seconds, which is fair use. Six six seconds is fair use. 10 seconds is too long. So, I don't know if you can get the gist of it, but... Yeah, it's essentially right. a Pinterest ripoff. Yes. yes. All right. So how do I shut off this? Uh... Just click on screen share again. There you go. Yeah, I did. And now hit pause. And now i got to stop this... Uh... Uh, like... uh, okay. That was that was wonderfully done, Brian. That was that was beautiful. Click. Very click. very smooth, very smooth transition. <sighs> oh wait, wait. Let me let me go look for a picture of a observatory <laughs> for ten minutes. <laughs> At least it was my content. Oh. <laughs> uh, we are discussing technology in the arts. This is an issue. It is sort of, fair use. Sort of. We did not use more than the appropriate amount of of content. It, it may be but, fair use. But anyway, that is the new MySpace. And you can leave a your email address there if you want to get an invite to it. It looks like they built it from the ground up. I'm not even sure if the old MySpace so, account. So tell me, Brian, what is the argument for even considering MySpace again? I would like to see. I would just like to try it out. Why? Just to see if if it's an alternative. I'm curious. Alternative to what? Facebook. Google so, Plus. So you are, yeah, because. Remember, MySpace has always, you know, continued to be, you know, big for musicians. My Facebook um, Facebook fails miserably at that. I don't know. I I follow musicians on Facebook. Yeah, so do I, but it, it's not. You know, what, what does MySpace offer that Facebook does not? The integrated music player? I mean, Facebook dropped that. I can hit play on a, a video in Facebook. I can I can also share music on s- using Spotify with Facebook. Right, but not all people use Spotify. Everybody on Facebook does. I, you know what? I don't. I, I, I have it, but I, 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 I don't really use it. You're odd. 
I'm not a big fan of Spotify. Yeah. I got five million songs in my library. Why would I go to Spotify? Because you can also play your local music with Spotify, but the minute you don't have something, chances are it's on Spotify. Plus, I can listen to radio, so I can throw out Pandora. I can thumbs up, thumbs down like Pandora. I can use other people's playlists. There are integrated applications. If I don't want to listen to commercials, I can pay out of it, the commercials, which I do. I can listen on Linux. I can listen on my phone. I can uh, subscribe to other people's playlists. I can see their activity of their music using Spotify. It, it for me, has, has greatly enhanced my music listening experience and has allowed me to discover a lot of new artists. I'm more of a, I'm still the old fashioned internet radio. Then MySpace is probably for you. <laughs> no, I mean, I just, like, um... Because MySpace is kind of old fashioned. I, I, I use the, the TuneIn app a lot and listen to, like, the, the European digital stations that broadcast 80s New Wave. There are a lot of ways to listen to music integrated with social media like Facebook. RDO is fantastic. Um, Last FM, of course, still does scrobbling, but uh, Spotify integrates with that. The, the thing I like about Spotify is how well the APIs talk to other APIs. And um, I just I love the way that I can share music. I love the way that I, I'll be listening to a song and I'll think of somebody and I'll say, take this song and send it to this person who's on Facebook because everybody's on Facebook. You know what I mean? I'm not saying I'm going to convert to MySpace. I think you are. I think, <laughs> you are. I think they're going to call it My Pinterest because that's exactly precisely what it looks like. And that, like that's that's my argument too. You're you're trying to take an old name that is recognized and you're trying to do something new with it. So what do you do? You copy the exact look and feel of a popular service that will probably be around for another 6 months. Did I just defeat you? Because now your your head just like went from like this big to this big. Just like that. There's Brian. By the way, sorry, I think I've I've had this uh my screen on this whole time. Oh, because you clicked on your picture? Yeah. Yeah, that's not good. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to. It was during that whole mishandled transition that you uh, killed me for. Yeah, beautiful. It was. So how do I get? How do I get rid of that? It was smooth. Steve, what's what's the guy who died? What's his name? <laughs> what? Steve Sable. Steve Sable would have loved it. So how do I get it? Just the automatic switching again. Just click on the. Click on the big picture. I did, and it's still showing a blue. Ah, this... Oh, no, it's showing your picture. It's not showing the screen anymore. Right, but now when I start talking, it's not going to switch to me. No, if you click on the, pit, on the big picture, it will switch automatically. No, it's not. So now I'm forced to keep switching back and forth, apparently. Probably the less you touch it, the better we'll be. Well, okay. Uh, All right. Let, well, let's let's uh, let's move on. I'm I'm just saying. Let's I'm just move saying. On. I'm not. I am not switching to MySpace. I just want to try it out. You're That's not switching all. to MySpace, just like you're not switching pictures between us, right? <laughs> okay. Remember, God. remember the crossing of the fingers last. Yeah, week? I do. I'm not crossing them this week. Okay. Because it didn't work anyway. <laughs> It'll be fine. All right, so let's talk about the big story of of the week, and uh, that is the disaster known as 
the new Maps app on iPhone and on iOS 6. Well, let's also talk about the removal of the YouTube app and how people were uh, angered by the removal of the YouTube app and the obvious uh, move on Apple's part to do that more or less because they want to promote their own in-house uh, video service. Right. But they did come out with a YouTube app, a new YouTube app that works great. I mean, that day. No, well, not them, but Google did. Yes. Yeah. Google. I, as in, yeah. Well, it was not Google's fault that the original YouTube app was removed. It was Apple's choice. By the way, I switched to your screen when you weren't. Oh, good. <laughs> this is why automatic switching is preferred. I don't know how to get back on that. Just click on the big picture. Please. I am. It's not doing anything. You know what? I'm starting the, the uh, podcast <laughs> next week. Well, use the Tech Arts account. Yeah, the tech. I don't want it on the Mazzy. It's brand okay. branding. Branding. I have uh, a few followers on Lamazny. I know, but it's not the Lamazny show. No, it's not. So uh, you should leave on automatic switching. <laughs> I I wish I could. It's it's out of my hands now. I I don't know how to get it back onto automatic. I I keep on seeing the blue line around the the small box. I'm clicking on the big picture window. And it's not automatically. Have you tried clicking on uh, your small box again so it's not forced to you? Um, yeah, I was. Let me. Uh... I'm having some delicious shelled oh. almonds. It's working now. Did you click on the blue box? I clicked on the blue box. Yay! Yeah, everything everything in Hangouts works in a toggle uh, function. I was doing it before, and it didn't seem like it. Was, there must have been a delay, and I wasn't giving it enough time. So, okay, all right, uh, okay. So the speaking of giving it enough time, what? Well, also, you know, I, I said the big disaster of the week was Map, Apple Maps app, but that was until this webcast. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. Uh, Apple releases the, this new Maps app because they hate Google with a passion, and that this thing sucks. Something fierce. Yep. And okay, I didn't switch it now, and you're gone. No, I'm here, man. I'm here. I, I know. I just know. Talk, just talk. This looks like one of the Apple Maps uh, images. It's it's like a it, it's like a, a pathway to nowhere. Now, am I am I correct in uh, saying that the Apple map solution uses uh, OpenStreetMaps? It uses a bunch of different sorts. There's TomTom Tom is included. It's it's really bizarre, and that's the problem. It's it's getting this information from all these different sources, and it's not... Integrating them well? Yeah, it's not jiving at all, and it's incomplete. It's incorrect. The imagery is terrible, and... and I mean, bridges are melting. I mean, it's crazy. This thing was not ready to be released, and yet they unleashed it. I mean, people waited online for this thing, for the, yeah. for the iPhone 5 with iOS, iOS 6 built in, obviously. And, you know, people with older iPhones, like, they were just chomping at the bit to download iOS 6 like it was this godsend. And I had... People got to start reading or something because I was reading the articles. I knew that the Maps app was going to be a disaster. You know, I knew there were all these issues. So I hate to say this, but if Steve Jobs was alive, this never would have happened. Oh no! This is this is a, this is the first huge mistake by Tim Cook. This this no, it never would have happened. Either he would have worked the Maps app team harder to get it done, or he would have created two team two teams to fight it out and create the best app. Right, or if, if it still wound up like this, because, I mean, Google relies on a lot of the, 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 the you know, the cars and, and the feet on the streets. Yeah, they do. And they have something like 5 million miles uh, logged. Right, and, and Apple is hiring 15 people for their maps division. 
or whatever. That, I saw uh, an article saying that they they had uh, 15 positions open. It's like you're talking about a fleet of cars and uh, user input compared to 15 people trying to get all this stuff sorted out. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen anytime soon. People are stuck with this. And there's all sorts of conflicting information whether or not Google has a new Maps app for iOS 6 ready to go. I, I tend to believe that they do. It wouldn't, Apple, be so, it wouldn't be so bad if there was not a fantastic competitor like Google Maps. But there's a fantastic competitor in Google Maps. Navigation in uh, Android phones is flawless. It's fantastic. Yeah. I, I can't live without Google Maps. I mean, I... I love Google Maps, and it's funny, you know, somebody, somebody I know has an iPhone in Florida upgraded to iOS 6, and they're like, oh, you know, I think it's great, and I'm like, I, I use the Maps app all the time. I, I, I'm not using that disaster of, you know, of an app that Apple gave us, so my, you know, my iPhone 4 is, you know, still, you know, I'm not on iOS 6 yet, and I, I probably won't go on iOS 6 until I absolutely have to, yep. uh, because... From what I understand, a lot of the features in iOS 6 don't even work on on iPhone 4, and I don't even have 4s. I'm I'm on 4, so. Um, You're the lucky one. Yeah, I mean, I don't think you know. I, I don't think an upgrade is in my future anytime soon, and I'm happy about that. I'm 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 fine with my iPhone the way it is. Um, but I mean, this. I'm fine with my Android the way it is. It's embarrassing and 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 insulting to Apple's loyal customers and you know iPhone users that they gave them this Maps app, knowing that the Maps app was fine and popular the way it was, and gave well, people. How many how many decisions does Apple make that take a fine, adequate solution? I mean, let's talk about the the uh, the connector. Yeah. Why did they have to switch that? Oh, because they want to sell new cases and like all that stuff. I I hate to be pessimistic about that. I know I don't hate to be pessimistic. I just am. Um, that's ridiculous to take something that has been perfectly fine, continued to work, and would have worked forever. The, I mean, the power of the iPhone and iPad and all these devices is the commonality of their, of their shape and form and function and the expectation that uh, vendors can have in developing accoutrement for those devices. Mm-hmm. So switch the what mm, when you switch the connector, it causes major issues for people who have been collecting cases and all that shit for those devices for years, and now all that is not going to work with their brand new phone. Yes, Grr, you know. Yeah, it it. it. I'm at a loss for how Apple botched this whole thing. And, uh, you know, again, it, Tim Cook, this is a major, you know, mistake um, under his watch and the first one, you know. But, you know, Steve Jobs would never, never would have let this happen. I mean, I, I'm, I would even venture to guess that if, if the Maps app was not ready, he would just he would just admit that Google has a better product. They had before, and you know there there are lots of reasons why they didn't need to do this. Yeah, I I, I think he just would have bit the bullet and and said you know, God damn it, I hate Google, but you know we got to keep the app until it's ready. It, this is this app is not ready. Yeah, it's it's definitely not a great thing. He would not have put out anything that had melting bridges and buildings on it. 
Yeah. You know, you knew we were. You know, when when they announced all this months ago at the developers uh, conference, I mean, you saw the writing on the wall, like the 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 navigation logo, that the the logo for at the icon. Yeah. For the turn by turn navigation, had a turn taking place on top uh, at the top of an overpass. So you're. It, uh, do you ever, do you ever see the icon for? Uh, I don't know if you can. I don't know how that's going to show up. Uh, yeah, you can't see it. Oh, you can kind of see it. See how there's the interstate there and the yellow line and the interstate going across it. Uh, hold on for a second. So, did you show that again? Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. So, uh, so the the turn by turn navigation uh, icon that Apple showed back when they said, "Oh, we're gonna have our our own Maps app on iOS 6, has a has a line, has the route going straight, and then at that overpass going left. It's an overpass." That that navigation would lead to somebody getting killed. You know, I mean, that, even though it was stupid, it was it was a detail that was pretty obvious, and it just set the stage for all the craptacularness of this of this disaster of a of an app. Well, it definitely was a mistake, and uh, it's amplified by the fact that the competition. Is not only adequate but fantastic, and it's the competition that was there. It was in place already. Yeah, it was native. It was it was in. And I mean, who does not use Google Maps? I guess some people use Bing. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Uh, uh, my friend's uh, wife down in Florida. That you know said she upgraded and didn't notice anything. I'm like, well, I'm you know I use the Maps app all the time. I'm not dealing with that, you know, that shit, <laughs> you know that that Apple gave everybody. And um, she's like, oh, I don't use uh, the Maps app, so I guess that's why it doesn't matter. And um, it's like there's you know a, a lot better app Maps applications out there. And I'm like, I'm like really better than Google Maps because you know, it better like a better Maps app has to start like paying me, you know, ten bucks every time I I I, I launch it because you know I, Google Maps is awesome. There are definitely other Maps applications out there, and as a matter of fact, there are really great uh, GPS applications that um, make use of social data and traffic and and make make sense of the data differently than Google Maps navigation does but I don't know from the voice I mean the voice that came with the uh, latest version of Android uh, which is so smooth and sort of beautiful and uh, recognizable I mean as somebody who is very familiar with the previous voice that they used which was functional to the new voice. The new voice is like silky and smooth and, and um, you can tell that they paid a lot of attention to it and it's a it's a joy to use. It just is a joy to use and um, I, I'm not sure why they felt like they really needed to do something different other than the reliance on a competitor. Yeah, I mean just, just the, the You know the drive to get away from Google, and uh, it really it's all them. And it's not going to get fixed anytime soon. So I mean, people can complain for you know they can complain about it all they want. It's not going away, and it's not clear whether or not Apple's going to approve uh, a new Google Maps app. Well, that approval process can be difficult. Right, because Apple uses redundancy as one of the factors, and you know, 
but again, I mean, this is not redundant. I mean, this, this, it, it's comparing a, a perfectly functional, beautiful application to a perfectly shitty one. Yeah. That's a shame. And, uh, yeah, I, I just can't believe Apple screwed over its its users who have stayed loyal to them all these years. Well, how about new users? How about somebody who's finally making the switch from Android to iOS and uh, decides that, you know, they're going to give it a shot and this is their first experience? Somebody who's familiar with the... I mean, what functions do you use on your phone the most? I can tell you my most used function, aside from listening to music on my Android phone, is navigation. I have it in my car, and I use it to get everywhere. Navigation is pretty damn important to me, and I'm happy, really happy, that I'm using Android right now. Yeah, well, I'm happy I'm on uh, iOS 5 point something or other. Um, yeah. And still have my Google Maps because I am not giving up my Google Maps. Good for you. No way. Fight the good fight, Brian. Yep. Oh, so anyway, to, to finish that point about the fact that my wife, uh, my my wife, my uh, friend's wife living in Florida, um, I, I also saw some comments that people in Florida apparently prefer Bing Maps. Um, because they, oh, uh, Florida. Because there's more development down there. Apparently, Bing Maps has updated it with you know new roads and stuff quicker than Google Maps. So, I guess it depends on region. But uh, I mean, for the Northeast, I mean, Google Maps pretty much has everything nailed down. Yeah, we're definitely sort of we have the northeastern bias, but yeah, I don't know. But yeah, they made some, they made some big mistakes, I think. They did, they did, and uh, you know, I'll, I'll put some links, uh, I guess, in the in the blog post whenever this video gets archived, hopefully, and uh, just be patient one. with your clicks, Brian. Everything will be fine. Just be patient with your clicks. I'll give you a click. Ah. <laughs> So now that I have to be at Mercer County Community College uh, by 9 a.m. tomorrow yeah, for my thing that I told you about. Yeah. So. All right. Uh, did we ever agree? Real quick, before we go, before we go, they had me do a lot of work. <laughs> I was shocked when they sent me. It, what, what they sent me going into this. I mean, I had to do a lot of research. Yeah, that's what some people expect. I and mean, I basically had to put a full day of work into into this thing. It's some things are some things are an investment, right? Yeah, yeah. I uh, hopefully it works out. So. Well, best of luck to you. Thank you. And uh, I guess that's that's all I have. Anything else? No, I think I think we're good. And so we're just over an hour. So uh, it's good. We we shortened it by about five minutes. <laughs> yeah, but the content was much more on on uh, on point tonight. Right, right. Except for except for when I uh, couldn't get the. And except for when I went over to get the observatory sketch. And except for the ten other times you left this room. Well, I was hungry. I was uh, stargazing, and I didn't have time to eat, so I have a pile of uh, shells now. Well, I, I saw you down a banana. Yeah, that was before you started broadcasting, though. Yeah. You hope it was so, a banana. So when, I, yeah, so when I hit start broadcast, you got hungrier? No, I just, I, I have this big, hold on. See, I have this wonderful container of nuts. Oh, my goodness. Isn't that amazing? Uh, 
That was actually a bowl that I made in uh, college. Well, you know, now, now you... Uh, Want some nuts? You, ju you just satisfied all the comments on the customer and the service by showing us your nuts. Yeah, that's exactly right. I don't, good, thing I those don't, good thing those comments aren't on technology and the arts. I, I, don't, sh I don't show my nuts lightly, so consider <laughs> yourself special. I, 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 I will cross my fingers again <laughs> and, hope, and hope that we don't have any strange comments on this episode. I, like I said before, I'll say it again, you have to have viewers before you have comments. And we don't have viewers. We're getting subscribers on the blog. Oh, really? People are liking the posts, yes. Oh, that's cool. That's good. I haven't seen the numbers. I have to look at the stats. And not and not uh, Joe Woodall either. Joe, Joe is a loyal viewer. As a matter of fact, I saw a comment from Joe today because I said that I'm going to uh, be Walter White for Halloween. What, you laugh? You, you don't think that I could pull off a Heisenberg uh, impression? No, no, I, I think you can definitely do it, but I, I just was funny. And, and I had other people saying, well, that's not a costume, you look just like him, you know? Yeah. Or whatever, but anyway. Well, All right, I would, like, I would what, like to do something Doctor Who related, but I, I just don't have the hair to do it. What if you had your son dressed up as a Dalek and, I don't know, that's all I got. Yeah. No? What, is it too cold out at Halloween to take out your newborn? Maybe a weeping angel in, in next week's episode. Oh, by the way, oh, yeah. Before we go, I mean, oh, we were almost. I, I know, but before we go, I mean, this this coming Saturday is the fall finale of Doctor Who, already. You know, the five episodes are already already. Uh, we've already come up to the five the fifth episode, which is the one uh, that I saw filming in New York City back in April. And you know, if this uh, podcast was a Doctor Who series. We would be ending our season right now. <laughs> okay. So I have. I'll, I will be talking about that next week. All right. The the fall finale of Doctor Who, which is the equivalent of the Christmas episode next week. In in the Technology Notes podcast. Time. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, when you were looking through the telescope, you were able to see when this podcast started. <laughs> yep. Yep, I was. All the way back there by the Big Bang. There was the beginning of this episode. It's funny. We were talking about theories uh, regarding the size of the asteroid that hit the moon to make the Tycho Crater. And there was a, apparently some theory that the asteroid split in two and half of it came and killed the dinosaurs and half of it made the Tycho Crater. And he said, yeah, but they found out that wasn't true. Oh. It was a fun night. It was a fun night. By the way, not that, uh, not to extend this any further, but one thing I wanted to talk about that I, I left off was uh, the uh, crater in Siberia. That Russia just announced, like last week, I think. Yeah. That it's like the world's largest supply of industrial diamonds. Is this crazy? They they found it in the seventies. That and makes sense, given all the pressure. There's just this huge um, mine of diamonds, but they're they're not diamonds. They can be used for jewelry. Because they're all flawed or something? I, I forgot what it's... Uh, the impact... Um, I don't know. Let me... Uh, I'll put a link to it, but the, the, 
because of the way it was, uh, because of the impact. Something impact. Um, let's see if I can get the. <laughs> and it's an asteroid, it, but it's an asteroid crater. Okay. Uh, and it hit. Um, But basically, there's more diamonds in this crater than in the rest of the world combined. But again, they're not usable for jewelry. They can only be used in uh, industrial and technology uses. So Russia had not hadn't announced it, even though they knew about it in the 70s. Well, yeah. The Soviet Union knew about it in the 70s. But um, they never mentioned it to anybody until now because now they think that it's finally um, the world's finally ready to, to get this additional supply of industrial diamonds into the uh, Are we in a diamond shortage? No, but Whew! Alright, all right, I guess, yeah, I guess that's what they're saying is oh that my God. A they... diamond shortage? We have a diamond shortage. Hold on. Seriously? No, no, hold on. We're all done. It's eleven thirty six. I know. I can't I can't I can't scroll down, but okay, we'll talk about it next week. Alright, that sounds good. Alright. So, but you you brought you brought up the asteroid crater and that reminded me of it, so Yeah, it makes sense that uh the pressure and the heat and the he actually was talking about lava on the moon. I said there was lava on the moon? I said to myself, I, I didn't say it out loud. But uh Apparently there was like a lava bed, and he was talking about the formation of it. Was such a cool, had so much fun. I guess All right, it's... well, All right. Man, thank you for, uh, once again for another fantastic episode. And thank, thank uh, you. And, and and unfortunately, we went off point at the end after we said we stayed on on, on point, but and except for the other points where we went off where we went off point. Yeah, yeah our our off points of light. Yeah, but that's sort of the fun of of our podcast is how we go off point. It's 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 basically the ampersand of the the technology and art segment and with an asterisk. Yes. And a semicolon. Yes. With parentheses around it. With parentheses, air parentheses, like this. Hold on. In post production, can you put an actual print me making parentheses? Oh, wait, this is YouTube. Yeah. I can give you a hat. If you... you have that hat, the pork pie hat? Huh? Oh, put a hat on me? I thought you were talking about my post about the Walter White thing. No, I mean, no. the pork pie... I, meant, I, I can give you those... I can give you a Google Effects hat. Yeah, that's not... I, that's not gonna help. No. Nah. No, you can't do that to me. Only I can do that to me. Here, I'll do that. No, I'm not doing it. I'm. We're we're out. Yeah, we're done. We're done. All right. We're done. I I I I have to go to FedEx office after this and get some copies made for tomorrow. That sounds like fun. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So next week, uh, I'm assuming it will be normal time. I hope so. <laughs> I really appreciate the extra time. It was it was in in my opinion. Uh, gracious of you and and it was a great opportunity so I really appreciate it uh, I really appreciate you asking me in a Facebook post <laughs> it wasn't even about me it, w it wasn't even on my wall you you asked me through a comment on your own post right because I knew you would have a little bit of peer pressure and you wouldn't be like oh you know or whatever <laughs> you'd be like I'm like why did he do it like this because that that way if you said no I would have had this army of people saying, uh, don't pressure him. He's trying to have a fun stargazing time. Yeah. Boo, hiss. <laughs> All right, my friend. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Until next I'll week. Talk, I'll talk to you later. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye.